Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 63 of the Cloud Computing Training Show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have as our special guests, well-known leading experts and influencers, Joe Peterson of Clarify360 and Charles Johnson of Alert Logic. Joe Peterson is the Vice President of Cloud Services for Clarify360, which focuses on cloud enablement and security. Joe is the founding co-chair of Cloud Girls, which has since been awarded by CRN, Woman of the Channel recipient for the last three years. She is ranked as the top 100 cloud influencer by Rise Global, a top 100 key influencer in IoT by Global Data, and a top woman in cybersecurity by Cybercrime Magazine. And in 2019, Joe was named a channel influencer by Informer. Joe is followed by an audience of over 40,000 on Twitter. And we're also pleased to have on the show Charles Johnson, who is the Vice President of Alert Logic, which is focused on ensuring the organizations are enabled to protect their data and infrastructure from malicious activity. Charles began his career in InfoSec, securing communications for the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Joint Communications in the United States Navy. Hi, Joe and Charles. It's great to have you on the training show this week, and thanks for joining us. It's good to be here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Oh, that's excellent. And hi, Dave. It's great to have you back on the training show as always. Yeah, it's always great to be here. It's great to having uh, Joe and Charles on. Looking forward to a great conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And look, if you haven't um, watched the Australia show and the C-Suite show now, please skip back and, and watch those because we covered some great topics. Uh, it's been an, an amazing, uh, amazing couple of shows. So really looking forward to the training show this week as well. So no further ado, let's move on to uh, the, the opening sort of question and what we're going to be talking about. So, And in this week's show, we're talking about the cloud security failures. And according to Gartner, through 2020, 95% of cloud security failures will be the customer fault. What's your take on this, Joe? I think that some of it just comes down to hygiene and security. You know, we learn as engineers to keep it simple, right? And sort of something we were chatting about before, what kind of disservice are we doing to our people by making them responsible for VMs when we don't really teach them how to secure those VMs. We don't give them the training that they need to do that. I read that 7% of all S3 servers are completely publicly accessible without any authentication, and 35% of those same servers are unencrypted. Same set of servers are un unencrypted. So um, customers, you know, get in and over their skis all the time, and it's really up to us and up to their IT management to make sure that they're getting training because I think that's what what is missing. And what are your thoughts on that then, Charles? I, I, I think this is going to end up being one of those things where the culture has to change as as our abilities change. And, and I totally agree with the statistic. Uh, you, you might find you know similar statistics with the National Highway and Transportation Safety Organizations where every state has anywhere between three or 4,000 fa fatal uh, auto accidents every year. And it seems absolutely ridiculous with all the laws that we have and all the safety uh, features that you have in cars, but yet, it, it's the people that are driving the cars irresponsibly that they create these issues. So um, that's one piece. I think the second piece is you got to update the culture in IT. We've gone 30, 40, 50 years of heroic IT uh, organizations where you have one guy carrying really the weight of the entire organization. And, and it can't run that way anymore. There's too much change, too much velocity in the change to allow us to have the same cultural behaviors as we've had in the past. Until we change that, we're still going to see these issues. Yeah, I think every, I, I think I agree with everybody. This is one of those things where it's pretty obvious, and and so the training issue, but also the, the ability to get um, the culture. I mean, I just heard the word from Charles. I, I keyed on that. The culture is really needs to change as well. We have to basically have a culture of we don't stop learning. And so, in other words, it's a continuous learning kind of a culture. We're updating the technology. We're updating the processes. Things like that. We're never satisfied. And we're always healthily paranoid in terms of all the how the attack breaches are going to come and how they're going to, you know, drive. And I, I think that's something that's missing from enterprises worldwide. And I think ultimately training is one thing, but at the end of the day, you have to make training available to everybody, and they have to use it, you know, really kind of as a matter of culture. We get them to the conferences, they're going to Black Hat, they're updating their skills, 
Uh, they're getting the right certifications that they need, but more often that they're really kind of following um, you know, the best practices and they understand where things are and they're not getting outdated. If they're outdated a year, uh, the risk goes up, shoots up. So Joe, I, I got a question for you. By 2018, 60% of enterprises that implement appropriate cloud visibility and control tools will experience one third fewer security failures. You know, how does this, vis, how does visibility change the equation? So I guess it's about being proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, absolutely. So funny, one of my customers told me that cloud obscures visibility, making things cloudy. And I thought that was funny. He was trying to be funny. Um, but he was right, right? And so when you look at supporting a completely distributed architecture that can use the full power of the public cloud and deliver visibility of server workloads, you face two primary limitations. You face the limitation of how to capture and filter the traffic, and you face the limitation of how to scale without bringing too much or too little data. Those are the two things that I think you face, right? So you, back to Charles's point earlier, you really have to have a playbook and you have to have decided what you want to do as a company. If you don't make those decisions, then you're gonna have default decisions, which are really decisions anyhow, right? So you need to start with an idea of where you wanna go and not, we can all buy tools, right? But, but tools don't solve the problem. It's having a strategy that solves the problem. So Charles, what are the, the more proactive things that people can do to deal with security in the cloud? So log is super popular right now, and it doesn't really matter what manufacturer you have. Um, you know, it's it's the tool of choice today. I, I think the one thing that that people miss with log is that it's inherently reactive. I have to be able to understand what's happening with that log. It's already occurred, and now I'm trying to figure out retroactively what the log means in concert with everything else that's happening in my environment. Um, you've got to get on the wire. You really have to understand what's happening with your APIs. Are, are you uh, testing your APIs? Are you using something like Postman to understand what the requests look like and what the impact looks like on the back end? You have to put yourself in the position of either the user or the bad actor and understand the way your, your environment responds to that and then start building compensating controls based off of that activity. Uh, it's a bit of a spin on the penetration test. I think penetration tests are um, needed, but it doesn't really give you the full picture on how you should be uh, building compensated controls into your environment. And then you leverage the log and some of the other security tools uh, to be basically validate your, your architecture for security and really for everything else you have in your environment. But it, it really has to start off with the plan. It can't, it can't be retroactive. It can't be retrofitted. It must be really part of the architecture. Absolutely. So, Joe, you're called into a board of directors and they're they're concerned because they've just got audited and they found out there's lots of different security vulnerabilities that have been exposed in the system and they think we're lacking training that's causing them. So, so what's your general advice to boards of directors, C-level folks in terms of what training needs to be put in place and, you know, how much is, you know, how much can they do quickly and how much will they have to take time and, you know, what are kind of the critical success factors of that stuff? Yeah. So if it's a highly regulated industry, the first thing I would tell them is to work towards the regulatory constraints that you have, because that's the thing that's going to bite you in the ass the fastest. Right. That's going to cost you revenue. It might cost you um, government ranking if you're in the medical space, whatever. I would I would get myself correct there first. You know, you, you almost have to have when that sort of thing happens, parallel swim lanes going. You need to shore up immediately what's going to cause you revenue loss, brand loss, loss problems, right? And and speak to that. And then you need to put some sort of training policy or um, guide guidebook into place to say, look, this is how you're going to stop this from having, you know, to something Charles said that was really important and it got me thinking. A vulnerability test, a penetration test is just a snapshot in time. And it's already archaic by the time that you do it. Right. It just gives you an idea of what that is happening at that moment, but it doesn't give you any idea of how to fix that thing going forward or how to prevent that thing going forward. It really doesn't because it's just that snapshot in time. So that's what I would say. So, Charles, you have the same question. Why would you respond? I, the, the training piece is, I think, really material and the, the one thing that we don't know is what we don't know, to, to quote Donald Rumsfeld. So I think the first thing that we need to do is educate ourselves on our architecture, 
um, and you know, as a consultant, I always say we. Uh, I, I would I need to understand everything that's happening here, and it's not just the the technical bits of that, but it's also the business pieces. Who who actually runs payroll? How many people are on that team? When do they actually execute payroll? Do they do it on a Sunday afternoon because it's the easiest time to get that done? What risks are exposed when they do that from Sunday at home because they couldn't get into the office that particular day? Does that person have operating VPN? We need to understand the business at that level to understand how the technology is being stretched and what we need to do to make sure that we have reporting controls and compensating controls. The first thing that we need to train on is our own inter enterprise and not make any assumptions in, in what we're doing there. And then when we have a really good footprint of what we're doing from that standpoint, then we can take out and say, hey, you know what, this looks in, you know, inherently risky. What can we do to make sure that we shore that up and we work as a team to shore up those bits and pieces? You take it chunk by chunk and you look at the overall picture of the organization's security and you understand how you're making progress. You, you don't do it by buying a tool. You don't do that by training in a particular skill set. You don't do that by you know compliance. You do that by really understanding your business inside and out and making sure that you eliminate as much risk systematically as you can. Absolutely. And with that exceptional answer, I'll kick that back to you, Brad. Yeah, what an exceptional answer. It's fantastic. Uh, look, the show's been awesome, guys. It really has. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's some great content. It's been a pleasure having you on the show as well. It's, uh, I know it's all, all of, uh, you're all in the US. So it's all your Sunday, so I fully appreciate that. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe, thank you so much. It's taken some time to get you on the show. I appreciate you extremely busy and your diary is pretty chaotic. So thank you so much for being on the show, Joe. I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was lovely. Excellent. And Charles, it's been an absolute pleasure, sir, to have you on the show. And uh, we look forward to having you both back on again as soon as we can. So, Charles, thanks again. Bring me back anytime. It's a pleasure. Excellent, man. Excellent. And David, as always, a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. It's great having Charles and Joe on. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone's on Twitter. Thank and you. I <laughs> everyone's on Twitter and I shan't bore you all with everyone's Twitter handles there's links below in the description box and there's going to be blue things on the screen right now so you can check those out and uh, write them down and get on Twitter and make sure everyone connects we appreciate all the support we get on Twitter with these shows and our blogs as well so um, thank you so much for all the support it means a, a, a real lot to us because we invest a lot of time in all this sort of stuff so uh, thank you so much uh, and remember to uh, like subscribe comment and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues and and also check out the Australia show and the C-Suite show uh, Joe Joe and Charles have been our guests for all, all three shows this week and it's been absolutely awesome. So, you know, go back and watch those as well. Thanks for watching and until next week.